Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. The Keystone XL pipeline is back in the news, which means we're seeing some of the same old problems with how media frame the issue. Here's NPR's Weekend Edition. Our Republicans see this as a great job creator and a boost for North American energy independence, but opponents see it as the encouraging development of uh, remote and lower grade sources uh, such as these Canadian oil sands. But that's not really the debate, jobs versus remote oil. What critics actually point out is that Keystone will create very few long-term jobs, means nothing for so-called energy independence, and will dump millions of tons of carbon into the atmosphere. But this kind of misleading setup was common. Here's ABC's This Week. Up next, the showdown over the Keystone pipeline. Will it really create thousands of American jobs and lower the price you pay at the pump? To answer those questions, ABC turned to the CEO of TransCanada, the company that wants to build Keystone. He claimed the pipeline would create 42,000 enduring jobs, which was scored as false by the fact checkers at PolitiFact. Things weren't much better on other shows. Here's Meet the Press. It will happen. It'll happen now or next year, the year after, because the country wants jobs and energy is always a primary concern of the American people. And look where the electorates, they think, who are the swing electorate? Working class whites. They, these are the people that Hillary Clinton will want, the Republicans will want. These people are going to be for jobs like this. He said there's nothing in it for us, there are jobs in it. And that's the way the American people look at it. Not energy, jobs. The only other guest to weigh in on Keystone was former CEO and possible Republican presidential candidate Carly Fiorina, who wholeheartedly agreed. Sometimes the questions reporters pose reveal a lot about their worldview. Here's ABC's Cecilia Vega on November 16th, after a report of another beheading by ISIS in Syria. These numbers, they are absolutely staggering. About 800 airstrikes so far against ISIS. Why isn't this working? The assumption is that dropping bombs should work. But anyone who's paid attention to Iraq, Afghanistan, or Libya might understand that war isn't a type of magic that delivers instant and positive results. If it were, the many thousands of airstrikes in Iraq would have worked. Over on the PBS NewsHour on November 18th, during an interview with a U.S. Treasury official, Margaret Warner mused about bombing ISIS-controlled oil facilities. These are essentially fixed assets, the oil fields they've taken over, the refineries they've taken over in Iraq and Syria. Why can't you just bomb them out completely? Her guest had to remind her that selecting bombing targets isn't his job. But it's revealing that what popped into her mind was how easy it would be to just blow up anything that's thought to belong to ISIS. A recent story in the New York Times explained that some Syrians were opposed to U.S. bombing because it was making things worse. One U.S. attack on an oil refinery said to be under ISIS control killed the 10 civilians who worked there. That's how war often works. It's not a lot like the fantasies of TV journalists. And finally, NPR's Scott Simon took a virtual victory lap after his interview with Bill Cosby. If you read the coverage, Simon was the journalist who finally asked the comedian about long-standing allegations of rape. Simon says it's all part of the job of tough journalism. I've covered 10 wars. I just did what I should. But here's what really happened. This, uh, this question gives me no pleasure, Mr. Cosby, but there have been uh, serious allegations raised about you in recent days. You're shaking your head no. I, I'm in the news business. I have to ask the question. Do you, do you have any response to those charges? Shaking your head no. There are people who love you who might like to hear from you about this. I want to give you the chance. All right. Um. It may seem a minor point, but in a society that's still unwilling to acknowledge the prevalence of sexual assault, it's significant that what's being called Simon's rape question doesn't include the word rape. Cosby certainly knew what Simon was talking about, and so did all the media writers that wrote up the interview and gave Simon credit for bringing it up. But a listener who was unaware of the substance of the allegations would have no idea. That's not how news reporting is supposed to work. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.